Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my most recent successful uh, resurrection, um, which uh, unfortunately wasn't very, like, actually useful, but it runs uh, this here Foxconn X58 Blood Rage motherboard. Um, so as you can see right now, it is it is running, right? We've got the BIOS up, if we go to board information, we've can see Blood Rage X58 detects all the memory sticks, so all three memory channels working. We currently have a i7-920 in there. So, anyway, um, yeah, I got this thing on eBay for 15 quid. It's what I would consider a sort of novelty X58 motherboard. It's got a really uh, funky vCore VRM. Um, and uh, it was broken, which is why I got it for 15 quid, and so I was like, eh, you know, grab it, see if I can fix it, and, well, I mean, don't really, well, fix it I did, it does run now, right, so that counts for something, so anyway, let's turn it off, um, and take it apart, and I probably shouldn't have left it running so long, because this thing actually gets pretty hot. This is, you know, uh, X58 used to have a north bridge, uh, which gets hot, though this handles just, like, PCIe, um, like, yeah, it just handles the PCIe slots and the chipset communication, as far as I know. Uh, memory talks directly to the CPU, so we do have an integrated memory controller on this platform, but the heatsink off, there we go. And, uh... Am I gonna pull while they're pulling the memory? Ah, eh, we'll have to get the memory sticks out of the way. So, grab all of that, and um, yeah. So here it is. Um, it's got upside down SATA ports, which is, uh, and they're super super tight. Um, horrible SATA ports. Absolute like the worst SATA ports I've ever found seen on a motherboard. I can't feel like I didn't even know they made upside down SATA ports and I didn't want to find out. <laughs> These suck. These like I can't believe I'm criticizing SATA ports, but like they really are that bad that it it, were, it is worth talking about how terrible they are. So yeah, as you can, at, at this point, you can probably see um, what was wrong with the board. We've got this ample over here, which um, is ha replacing the VTT VRM because one of the VTT VRM MOSFETs decided that, uh, well, uh, it doesn't want to live anymore and then promptly put a crater in the board, um, which uh, I am going to show you. So we will be pulling off the heatsink. So. Yeah, also, I guess while I take it apart, I should mention, so what makes the VRM on this board so funky is that this is actually a real 12-phase V-Core VRM on this board, and that chipset heatsink, oh, it's just... Yeah, um, and also the... Like, I, I'm in two, so I think it might be the previous owner. Basically, uh, a lot of the sort of screws holding the uh, heatsink onto the board seems to have, or, well, they're not really screws, they're like nuts, but with a, with a Phillips head, so, yeah, they're, they're weird. Anyway, um, yeah, these things, uh, they, they seem to have, like, a broken off tip of a screwdriver in them, which is really annoying, because it just means it's impossible to undo them and redo them, so that's, like, on one hand, it's, it's like, good that every single one, like, all of the mounting hardware for this board is, like, spring-loaded, and it's all metal, there's no plastic pushpins. On the other hand, <laughs> I, no, I wouldn't have preferred pushpins. Pushpins are terrible. Pushpins need to die. <laughs> so, okay, like... As as bad as like the the thing is yeah the mounting hardware on this board isn't in in particularly great condition unfortunately. Um. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. I'm not sure I even need want to do anything about that because, um, like yeah, I did get the board back up and running, but I've tried overclocking on this board because one of my main concerns with this whole Ample VRM replacement here is that the Ample has a 24 amp overcurrent protection, and the Intel documentation says that the maximum current for VTT is like 23 amps and uh, five. Like it, I, the the thing is, I don't know that much about X58, but 
if I'm reading the documentation correctly, the VTT rail goes up to 28 amps. I've not yet shut, I've not yet had the ample, uh, it's under my hand, oh, screw it. Um, I've not yet had the ample shut down on me while like messing with this board and I've run Linpack on it uh, in the form of Intel burn test. And uh, yeah, I've like messed around with setting the, the voltage on the ample relatively high. Um, and yeah, it's just it hasn't actually, like I've not yet had it shut down under load. At the same time, I've also had miserable success trying to overclock on this motherboard, um, which is like, I don't know if that's the ample's fault, like if that's the ample's fault or if it's the board's fault or if it's my fault because I really don't have much experience with X58. So heat sinks can now come off, I think, All right? Yep, Here we go. So, yeah, pretty nice uh, heatsink, I guess. Like, there's a lot of surface area here, but of course this kind of heatsink design will not work very well without uh, active airflow over it, so... Because um, the fins are quite dense. Um, and then also they have these, like, you know, airflow restrictors over the, the VRM fin snacks. There's the thermal pads. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's the board. And... Gonna zoom in because uh, there's the crater. So yeah, that used to be a high side MOSFET. Um, it's not anymore, as you can clearly see. That's a hole. I mean, it does. It doesn't go well. No, it's a crater. A hole would go all the way through. A crater is just uh, actually. Is it lower? Well, it's it, it's it's damp. Like it burnt the PCB quite badly. Um, but yeah, so one of the high side MOSFET, like this is, this used to be a two phase VTT VRM and then the high side MOSFET decided that, um, it just doesn't want to be here anymore. And so it blew up. Um, so the way I actually got it up and running is obviously we have the ample, but, uh, there was a bit of a process to this. So the first thing I did when I got the board is obvious. I took it apart, noticed, Hey, there's a, there's a scorch mark, uh, in the VTT VRM. And so the first problem is that this was actually shorting the 12 volt power from the 24 pin. Um, so this was the 24 pin 12 volt power was getting shorted to ground. So that's not great. Um, <laughs> Cause that basically means if you tried to turn it on and like the short wasn't super low resistance, it was like a couple ohms. So it was the kind of thing where it was like, <clears throat> it would have probably managed to turn on and then just like, gotten really really hot as uh the the short circuit would just pull in pull power into it um and possibly cause more pcb damage so <clears throat> yeah the way i dealt with that is the short is still very much there but this board i'll just get this out of the way uh this board you can see there was a input filtering inductor for the VTT VRM so the idea behind these input filtering inductors is that they basically block the switching noise from the VRM from reaching the rest of well everything else up like th they block the switching noise from going to the rest of the system um so I removed the input filtering inductor because by removing the input filtering inductor we disconnect 12 volt power from the shorted you know, part of the board. And so I don't actually have to deal with like removing the short circuit. That short circuit is still very much there. It's just not connected to anything anymore. So it's not a problem. Um, but yeah, if you put that inductor back on, then the, the like that's still shorted. So um, yeah, so that solved the short circuit situation. Uh, what's interesting about X58 motherboards and actually makes this kind of easy to do is that uh, without the VTT rail working or without the V-Core rail working, the rest of the board still runs, which was really, really convenient because it basically meant, like, one of the big problems that you run into with any kind of, like, e-power style repair or modification is that a lot of the time when you disable, like, let's say you're doing a GPU e-power and you're replacing V-Core, a lot of the time all the other rails decide to stop turning on. Um, so like you won't have memory power, you won't have memory controller power, you won't have like nothing will want to turn on. And what's, what really surprised me with this board is like with this condition where I just removed the VTT VRM and like disconnected the, the inductor, um, it would turn on. Like I would have Northbridge voltage, I would have chipset voltage, memory voltage, everything except vCore was running. So vCore wouldn't turn on because this chip, well, 
there used to be a chip over here, which was an ISL 6312. Uh, the ISL 6312, this was the controller and also with drivers integrated into it, this was the chip handling the uh, VTT VRM. And so this thing was very upset that its MOSFETs were missing, um, as well as the inductors. Um, and so this thing was very upset about that. And the ISL 6312, uh, its power good pin is uh, connected, I believe, I think it was power good connected directly to the enable pin of the uh, IR controller that handles the vCore v VRM. And so the thing, ab the thing about this is, is so the ISL 6312 gets very upset and it tells the, and, and basically it shuts down the vCore VRM. So I remove the ISL 6312 because I want, I need vCore, right? Like I need vCore to turn on. So remove ISL 6312, vCore works. So that was just like the, that was exactly what I was hoping for. It was just like, I don't actually want to know. Like, I don't want to figure out some kind of complicated enable signaling scheme. I just want the damn thing to turn on. Uh, and yeah, so removing the ISL 6312, it, board would turn on. And I was doing all of this testing without a CPU installed because I wasn't sure if it would like blow up the CPU when, when doing this. So before I put the ample on there, I wanted to check that the board would actually like fire up a CPU. And after thinking not that hard about what I want to do, like thinking a little bit about how to, because basically the problem here is VTT is the, my understanding of VTT for x58 is the memory controller voltage. So somewhat like the equivalent of system agent uh, on modern Intel platforms. Um, and so the problem is without VTT, the CPU doesn't run. Um, so I had vCore, but that's not enough to get the CPU running. And for basically, I had the idea like, well, we could just feed vCore into VTT because I had vCore, right? Um, so I ran a few, uh, they're not there anymore, but basically, and you can't even really, t oh no, you can kind of tell. So basically I ran some bridge wires from the legs of these capacitors over here. Um, so from like these two vCore capacitors over here, um, and I ran them over to the VTT capacitors. And so for a little bit, I was running the VTT rail off of the vCore VRM, which was enough to actually get the board to fire up and get the CPU to fire up. So that was great. Um, everything turned on, everything runs. Um, and then after doing that, I was like, well, you kind of want to have independent VTT and vCore voltage control. Right? Like, you don't necessarily want your VTT rail to be just locked in with vCore. Um, and so then I eventually replaced the VTT. Uh, so then, then once I knew that, hey, like, it'll boot CPUs, it runs, and all of that, uh, I put the Ample on there. And the Ample is... Uh, I'm not too thrilled. I think I might do a little bit more grounding on that, though I'm not sure. Like, my main problem with the Ample situation right now... Uh, also, I replaced the stock heatsink on the Ample with a bigger heatsink for from well, yeah, bigger, bigger little, he uh, bigger heatsink because the stock Ample. Well, the the thing is, like, while I've not had it shut down due to overcurrent protection, it does still get pretty hot. Just like sitting in the BIOS, this thing ends up at like close to seventy degrees on the back of the PCB. Um, so yeah, I put the bigger heatsink on there because this is probably approaching the limits of what the Ample is designed to handle. Like, I didn't manage to get it to shut down with, like, Linpack or anything, and and so I'm, like, I don't actually think, um, so this might actually be fine, but, yeah, it, it's, it is putting quite a lot of load on the Ample, and maybe the Intel documentation is just really generous, because it tends to be. Right, um, like the a lot, like I don't know if the the guidelines for the current draw there are like, oh, your VRM has to be able to do this, or it's more like it should be able to do this. Um, it doesn't specify. I refuse to believe that the memory controller regularly pulls twenty eight amps. That's insane. Um, and also, if it regularly pulled to twenty eight amps, then why hasn't this shut down? Like I've run those memory sticks I just had in there. Those are dual rank memory sticks. And I, I've messed around with memory overclocking on this. I've cranked this all the way up to like 1.4 volts. And yeah, it's not shutting down. Um, so the board is kind of a... Uh, so so yeah, this, this seems to be working fine. Um, but I'm not thrilled about the height, right? Like the, the criteria I had for this was like, I do want this to fit such that I can still install the stock heatsinks. 
which doesn't really give me a lot of options because obviously we've got the CPU over here. So it's like, if I lean it too close to the socket, you're not going to be able to mount any kind of cooling system. If I lean it too far backwards towards the IO, the, the, the VRM heatsink doesn't, like the stock heat motherboard heatsink doesn't fit anymore. So yeah, that's, that's not great. I can't exactly connect it to the back of the board. There's not really much to connect to on the back of the board, right? Just like, yeah, that's... So, yeah, I'm not thrilled about how this, um, how this turned out. Like, I'm not thrilled about this sticking straight up out of the board, but there's really no, like, I can't think of a better way to mount it because it's just like the, the heatsink goes through this area, so there's just not much space. Um, and yeah, but I am considering adding some extra grounding. Then, of course, the red wire is just pulling 12 volts up into the ample, um... And yeah, that's that's kind of it, you know, with this um, X58 uh, Blood Rage. Like, the the thing is, this is such a like as a, like the main reason I got this is I consider it a novelty board, and then the fact that I managed to get it back up and running was just sort of an added bonus because like like look at this memory heatsink. Like this is this is the heatsink for the memory VRM, okay? And the memory VRM is a three phase, which is like. That has to be what, like, that's probably the most overkill memory VRM heatsink I've ever seen. Um, I, I can't, well, maybe some other early DDR3 era motherboards might have something similarly. I think, like, the original Rampage Extreme has some insane memory heatsink. Yeah. Now, now that I think of it, I think the original Rampage, like, the Rampage Extreme had, like, a ridiculous memory VRM heatsink. Um... But yeah, but so like you've got that, which is just insanity. Um, it's got a re it's got a retry button, which is kind of neat. Um, postcode, which is actually kind of rare. Like even for like extreme, like oh, even for overclocking focused X58 motherboards, the postcodes aren't exactly super common. Uh, there's also all these heat sinks that I'm pretty sure come standard with the board. Like these are just like glued onto chips around the board, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty like I don't. I, I think those are orig original. I, I think it came with those from the factory. So, yeah, very much sort of a, a, a novelty motherboard. Um, for me, like, for, for my motherboard collection, I consider this a novelty board. It's not really like, oh, I'm going to be... I, I was I was planning to do a bunch of overclocking on this. I am kind of annoyed that, like, I did... You know, like, for the sake of figuring out if this actually is working properly, I have tried to overclock the board a bit, and it was very bad. <laughs> Probably because of me, but... Um, or because of the BIOS versions that that's on there. The board's on like P03 or something, and yeah. Um, so that that's that's not great, <laughs> but um, it does run. And the thing that I found found find most interesting about this whole process is the fact that the V core, like this this platform, seems to just not care. Um, and that's significant because let's say you had a different x58 motherboard where you wanted to like e-power the vcore vrm i think that would be pretty easy like assuming most x58 motherboards behave the same as this blood rage does where it's like the rest of the board turns on regardless of what's actually going with the cpu portion of it right because like the the without vtt without vcore without vtt rest of the board fires up so if you had like i don't know a, a different x58 motherboard where the vcore vrm explodes for whatever reason you could e-power it probably by just e-powering it, like without even having to. Like, also, it seems like VTT turns on before VCore does. So specifically, if VCore blows up and not VTT, you might not even have to do anything other than like remove the inductors and and maybe that's even it. Like that might actually be it because if the the last thing, like if the last chip in the power up sequence is the VCore VRM controller. Like, as long as the vCore VRM can't tell the CPU to not turn on, I can't see a reason for this to not just work if you replace the VRM. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of neat, is just, uh, like, X58 is, like, surprisingly easy to, to e-power. Um, might be something I mess with more in the future maybe if i find like a rare like a, a ramp like a dead rampage or something um then you know i could mess around with just replacing the vrm on one of those with with something better um because evidently it might be really easy 
Like, it might actually be super easy. I don't know. Maybe this board's in an... Like, maybe Foxconn did something weird where it's like it, the board can boot without the rest of the... Without the CPU portion of it functional. But, like, I don't think so. That doesn't really, like... Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, not much more to it. Just kind of whack an ample on there. Um... And board starts, well, desolder the ISL6312, throw an ample on there, bam, board works. I could have also just kept it on vCore. Like, that's the, that's the actually, like, the thing is, I don't know, like, the, the whole, like, from, from the perspective of, like, keeping the board in a reasonable form factor of, like, not having a giant power board, like, well, not, not having a VRM sticking off the, sticking straight up off of it. Running the VTT off of eCore was definitely more more convenient. Like that was so much simpler. <laughs> On the other hand, this is like far like this gives you more control. So, so this is like sort of the more proper way to do it, as as unproper as as this is in general. But yeah. Um, oh, I guess did I show the grounding? So. Yeah, if you're if you're wondering what I'm actually using for like these connections down there, uh, that's used soldering, uh, desoldering braid. Super useful for doing this kind of thing. Like if if you need just some kind of uh, yeah high current connection and you have a bunch of used sold desoldering braid. Like I save my used desoldering braid specifically for this kind of application, because um, it is really really convenient when when you can just do that. Um, but yeah. That's kind of it for the video. Um, I didn't really have much of a plan for this. Oh, I guess I never mentioned what's so funky about this VRM. This is a real 12 phase. Um, and we'll we'll cover how that like how that's a real 12 phase in a in a future video. Um, maybe after I figure out how to overclock on this motherboard better. I don't I'm not sure yet. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Hopefully you found it somewhat interesting. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Teespring and Patreon help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check the, the links in the descriptions out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video, so thanks for watching, and goodbye!